Hi, I'm Daz the Gas, and welcome to Oxmods Part 1. In this first part, we're going to take an open build ox just built exactly the same as Mark has explained in his videos. The only difference is with mine, the depth is 700 instead of 750, so it fits on my table a lot easier. This will all be connected to the computer with a StarTech network adapter. We're going to use an Evernet motion controller from Warp 9, a straightforward and parallel breakout board, and some 268N stepper drivers. The software we'll be using during all of this part one is going to be Mac 4. Right, I'm going to assume you've already downloaded Mac 4 from the Artsoft website and installed it and installed a new network card into your machine. This is purely because the motion controller is going to need a static IP. It's a lot easier doing it this way than reassigning your hub that you've got for the rest of the equipment at home or office where you are. <coughs> right, let's open up our network and sharing centre so we can get to the adapter settings. And here's our new StarTech adapter here. We're going to right click on this and go to properties. And we're going to go to the IPv version 4 properties. Now to set up a static IP address on this, we're going to use the default factory settings that come with the board. And basically what it says in the manual. So we're going to assign the board itself an IP address of 10.9.9.1 as per manual. Subnet mask of 255. 255 and 255 part missing from the manual which makes it a lot easier straight mess about if you put your IP address that comes with the card which is 10 9 9 9 the board will be identified straight away if you don't put that default gateway in it will stay as an unknown network and I'm just going to rename this smooth stepper will do me lovely so that's it smooth stepper it's now communicating with the computer next thing we're going to need to do is copy the drivers from the warp 9 site into our Mac 4 hobby plugins directory downloaded them that's these two here so we'll just copy and paste into the plugins directory next up we'll just run Mac 4 we're not going to use the Mac 4 profile we're going to leave the default one as it is and create our own new one I'm going to call it the ESS motion you can call it what you like. The screen set, we'll use the default one, which is WX Mac. And click OK and open. On first start up, it's going to want to know which motion device you're using. There's our IP address, which was put down as the default gateway. Tell it, Evernet Smooth Stepper. Click Apply, OK. If everything's plugged in, network adapter and everything's running right, she'll go straight in. Next you need to do is go in to configure your plugins and turn the plugin on. It's not turned on by default, you'll need to turn that on. Whilst you're in here, I should also be using shortcuts on there and we will be using the lure at a later date. Click OK. Now you can exit out of this Give it a second because your network card or your motion controller is going to have to go to sleep. If you try and go back straight back in, it won't find it. You'll have a problem. So if we open up now the profile we created, we'll give it a second. And bang, it loads straight away. Right, now we're back in here. We'll go to configure again. And we're going to go and configure 
the ESS plugin. Just as it says in the manual, just drop your pre-fill down to 200. I'm not 100% sure why yet, but I'm sure that will come later. In our inputs and outputs, whatever we want to use in Mac, we have to tell these inputs what it is, and Mac will then know. On the parallel port, but on the on the breakout port, <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. On the parallel breakout board, the standard pins for your x-axis for step and directions are pins two and pins three. So we're going to use the pins two and pins three. Pin two, if you now go to your drop down boxes, you'll find what you can assign in in here, and we're going to use number two as motor zero step and pin 3 motor 0 directory directory direction <laughs> sounds good and you can then just give these a name of what you're comfortable with using which mine's going to be so i can find it easy which is going to be x step and x direction click apply and okay once again okay down there but that's still not it, UX will not move. We now need to go and configure motors in Mac. So I'm gonna be using metric, so we'll click metric. Not really anything you need to change in there at all, so you can just click apply. On your motors, your motor zero is now up there. You've got it there. But it's got 2,000 counts per unit. Now if you go to use your machine and you're using the ox with the belts, and you've got them count set to 2000 from the left hand side of your X carriage to the other side you're just not going to do it to start your machine off and get it running nice drop this down to 50 if you're using it the same with the NEMA 23s just click apply you'll see the reason why later access mapping we're going to en enable the x-axis because that's what we're doing which is motor zero and this is now going to be motor zero two that's what we're using apply and click okay if everything's up here and running right you will now these these will not be grayed out if you enable you'll be able to jog this forward no you won't You should now be able to jog these backwards and forwards. If there is a problem, if they do not move, sometimes when you've been in to configure your plugins and gone to configure this one, clicked OK and came out of it, you might need to shut down Mac 4 and start it back up again. I just did during this video. Sometimes during that setting up, it, it puts you your motion controller to sleep basically and it doesn't wake back up so you need to do that manually so basically that that's it for the setting up part of the software itself so what I'm going to do now is go across to the machine plug in the motion controller power supplies everything to that one X axis and then we'll get it set up and running All right that's my X axis all wired up we have our motion controller connected to the Ethernet port. This is our breakout board plugged in USB purely for 5 volt. We have our ground, our step, and our direction. This is then going across to our 268N driver, the step and direction connected up, and our NEMA 23 and 24 volts. Our five volts are being fed by a panel hub. This this all, all eventually will go into an ATX case with the ATX power supply and 24 volts being fed from a 24 volt power supply. And of course, this goes up to our X axis. Right, let's get back to it in Mac 4. I'm sure you've all been messing about jogging your X axis backwards and forwards. And you've probably noticed if you want to move it 10 mil, it's probably going 30 or 40. 
that's because we haven't calibrated. Now I'm going to show you a quick and easy way of calibrating the same as I would do the e-stops on my 3D printer machine. So what you want to do is start off, obviously enable the machine and jog your x-axis until it is near the left hand side of the machine. Now I'm going to take a reference point with my calipers from, from here. My voice will go a little bit lower because my machine is on the other side of the room. As I said, let's take a reference point from here. This isn't going to be all that accurate because um, you know, that seems to have broke. So it's going to give you an idea of how close we can get it. Out nice. You don't need to take the measurement of that, that's just a reference point for you. Right, back on the machine is what we're going to do is we can go to the MDI section and we're going to set a G code in here of G00 and we're going to tell it the X axis and tell it to move to 50. Now to execute this just click cycle start and your X axis will move. This is where we measure how far it's been. So again from the machine we're now going to zero here and measure how far it's been by doing that which we've been 93.8 we'll say 93.8 right disable your machine because you can't get in the configuration without it go into Mac motors this is the one we're configuring which is, um, I forgot, 98.3, was it? 93.8, let's just have a look. 93.8. Right, the way we're gonna do this, bring up a calculator, and the calculation for it is what we asked for, divided by what we got, multiplied by the current counts per unit. So we asked for 50, so we'll divide that by what we got, which was 93.8 and then we're going to multiply that by the counts per unit we've we've got set there which is 50 this is going to give us 26.6524 going to copy this and paste that into there click apply and OK. Right, now we're going to do exactly the same again. So we'll, we'll go back into where we were, into our jog screen. I'm going to go to zero. That's where the machine thinks. And I'm going to take a reference point from here. Let's get reference point. That's our reference point there. Back to MDI, same command again. Tell it to go. Now let's go and measure how far it went. Right, again from here right we'll zero to Fifty point one five. So we're getting closer. Disable that. Go back into your motors. That's from dropping that down. That that's purely from doing that calculation that I use there. You can start adjusting it down minutely with your counts to get it absolutely perfect. But you've got to remember that caliper I was using might have been a lot closer than that, but it was broken. Other things you need to do is your velocity and your acceleration. Now your velocity is how fast that is going to move across that machine. I'm going to drop mine down for now to about 2000. You can play about with this until you've got it how you want it. 
Now the higher the number, the faster it gets up to that acceleration. So I'm going to drop mine down to about 100. I'm going to click apply and OK with that. Now if I went to start jogging, she's going really slow. Which is ideal for manacles, <laughs> manacle, mechanical stops, but I do think that needs to be just a little bit faster. Even in my case, I'm going to take that up to about three thousand. See where we go there. Enable the machine. That's it. She's going faster. You can play about with them until you get it to how you want it. So there we are, that's the x-axis, you just need to do a little bit of tweaking and you'll be up and running fine. And I will see you in part two when you've completed your z-axis and your y-axis. Well thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it just as much as I have filming it. I will see you in part two.